Now recognize Ms. Ross from North Carolina for five minutes of questions. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Um, Dr. Walensky, I really appreciate you being, being here today. And um, throughout the hearing, including just recently, we've heard some accusations about your stewardship at the CDC during the pandemic and um, even since the pandemic officially ended uh, last month. Before I get to my questions, I'd like to give you a moment to respond to anything that you would like to get on the record, um, if you'd like to take a minute to share anything. Um, thank you. I, you know, what I will say is our goal has always been to give the most accurate data, to be science-based, to get our kids back to school, to do so in a safe ma manner, to demonstrate the safety and effectiveness of our vaccines and to promote vaccination, which has been instrumental in getting us out of this pandemic. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I'm particularly grateful for your efforts to take the lessons that we've learned during the COVID-19 pandemic and use them to inform forward-looking policies that will make our country better prepared for the next pandemic that we know is coming. This includes spearheading the reorganization of the CDC to transform the agency into a more streamlined, nimble organization that is poised to ta tackle public health threats as soon as they arise. For example, under your leadership, the CDC has stood up the Center for Forecasting and Outbreak Analytics to forecast infectious disease outbreaks and inform policymakers in real time. We've already seen the success of this initiative in combating outbreaks um, in, such as MPOX last year. Um, could you speak for a word about this center and what it is doing um, to monitor and respond to emerging threats, including novel virus outbreaks with pandemic potential? Thank you so much for the opportunity, Congressman. I am particularly proud of the Center for Forecasting and Outbreak Analytics, not only because of the work that they do and the way that they are growing, but because they are getting the best of the best in academia and the private sector to do this work. This is a place people want to come. There are three core missions. They are looking at predict, inform, and innovate. How do we do and how can we get that information out locally? Among the successes that we have seen already, we talked about our modeling the potential spread and severe severity of disease. We saw early publication, one of the first in the country on Omicron, one of the first in the world on the severity of Omicron. We saw four or five technical reports on MPOX and the severity of MPOX, the outbreak of MPOX. We were plotted around the world for the work in that. Um, and then we are looking at what we are doing locally with public health officials. This is going to be um, a shining star. It already is a shining star among the great stars that we have at CDC in terms of our centers and I'm really looking forward to their continued growth and, and I'm grateful for the support um, to do so. Thank you. Thank you. I'd also like to briefly discuss, and you touched on this, CDC Moving Forward, which is focused on creating more agile, streamlined agency that can more effectively respond to a future public health threat. Uh, you launched this initiative first with a programmatic review of the agency and its systems. Why is it important to you to conduct this review, and how did its results inform your plan to modernize the CDC? Uh, this was critically important. It was April of 2022. We were just coming out of a massive Omicron wave, and we had learned a lot. Um, we had never, in, in CDC's 76-year history, had a once-in-a-hundred-year pandemic. And so the question was, how do we take the le lessons immediately learned and apply them so that we can be the public health agency of the future? And we learned a lot. We needed to move our science faster. And I am proud to say that since I've been at CDC, our science is getting out 50% faster than it used to, um, that we needed to have implementable on-the-ground guidance, and we needed to work with our partners in order to do so, and we continue to do that, that we need to have a response-based agency. We are expected to be a science-based agency. We also need to be a response-based agency, and we need to communicate well to the American people. We were really used to having our, our audience be public health workers and healthcare workers, but now all of a sudden, people were coming to CDC website themselves. They knew who 
we were. And so we really needed to have communication strategies to the American people. To that end, among the things that we're doing is we have 200,000 web pages on the CDC website. We're streamlining them down in a project called uh, Operation Clean Slate so that we have the most important tailored information to the American people and our public health partners. Thank you very much. And Thank Mr. You. Chairman, I yield back.